Today we're going to be making a traditional leather pouch just like this. We'll show you how it's done, coming up. Hi, welcome to Just in the Woods. I'm Justin. We're not exactly in the woods right now. I'm just going to go ahead and show you that some of these projects could be done in the home. And that way you can prepare yourself for your next outing. We're going to be making a leather pouch and you're going to need a few tools. Um, obviously you're going to end up needing your piece of leather. This happens to be an old motorcycle chap. You don't need anything too crazy. As long as it's not too thick, you know, something you would make a saddle or a holster out of, it's probably going to be too thick to use. But anything that has a decent amount of flex to it, it's going to be all right. You're gonna need some type of measuring device. You know, I got a regular ruler here. Um, I like using this, I guess they call it seamstress tape. You're gonna need a few markers, ink pens, things of that nature to go ahead and mark on your leather. And I'm gonna show you a trick here in a minute on how to get a good circle cut on out of it. I'm gonna mainly be using the silver marker here. Using, it's on black, it'll show up a lot better. You know, knife, pair of scissors, you know, typical stuff. Um, I got a little bit of string here. I'm gonna show you what that's for in a minute. As far as lacing it when everything's said and done, you have a couple different options. You could obviously use this type of leather lacing, uh, paracord, really anything that you could get a hold of that's going to be long enough and it's going to hold up and whatever suits um, your fancy as far as what you want to look like. For punching out the holes, you'll need a hole puncher, preferably like an actual leather punch um, would be recommended. I'm just going to use it all on my multi-tool. So now we're gonna go and get everything measured out. All right, so first thing you wanna do is get a rough estimate of how big you want your pouch to be and if you can even make a pouch that big out of your material. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, it doesn't have to be much, we're just gonna get a little bit of twine here. What I like to do is just go on ahead and get it tied around, I mean it could be anything, it could be a pen, pencil, you know, something that's gonna be pretty solid and it's gonna stay there. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little clove hitch in it. And obviously, you know, there's videos everywhere about tying different knots and we're gonna go over all that soon enough. And you're really gonna do about the same thing on your marking device, except we want 12 inch diameter, so we're gonna need a six inch radius. When everything's all said and done, we're gonna want this marker and this string to be right at six inches. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that out and get everything tied up and we'll go from there. And wherever we end up placing this guy in the middle, we're going to make sure that it'll mark all the way around and make sure that we know that it's going to touch material all the way around. Now I just like to go ahead and put these little dots, you know, all around and that'll get you your circle going. And it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, but that's going to be close enough. Went on ahead and put a mark in the center. We're going to end up needing that here a bit later, we go on ahead and do is we go ahead and cut this out now. You could also use a big bowl to trace around if you if you have one that is large enough. That will go on ahead and get you maybe a little bit crisper edge on it. It's not necessary. You could make it as serious as you want it, or you could just do it as quick and as loose as you want it. It doesn't matter. Now that you got your circle cut out, we're gonna come in an inch from the outside and we're going to have a hole every inch around the circumference of the circle. So we're gonna go ahead and get this set up. And that's where we're gonna be punching holes. Now all these aren't exactly one inch and I typically like to go around and check them. You're gonna have the cord weaving in and out of these holes. What I've found is that you want an odd number of holes. That way the cord going out as it interweaves and comes back around, when it ends, that final tail end piece is gonna be coming out as well. And that's what allows you to have your draw strength. So we're gonna go on ahead and um, we're gonna get these holes punched out I'm going to fast forward it. You don't want to watch me struggle punching these holes out with an awl and we'll get back to you soon for our next step. Alright, now that we got 
our holes punched out, I'm gonna go on ahead and lace this. Kinda of get a rough estimate, you want this to go around. It's better to have more than to have less because you could always go on ahead and cut off what you don't need. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this paracord and get this prepped up a little bit. I'm just gonna pull the ends off here. Kinda of get a little point on that, you know, real solid. We already got one over here. We're just gonna start with one of these going out and leave a little bit of tag in. And then we are going to weave in and out along the entire way. Remember what I said about having an odd number of holes and that way this end piece goes out as well. I'm gonna go ahead and do this and fast forward it. See here, uh, the last hole out is going out. So now that we got all that taken care of, we go on ahead, just pull a little bit, just get it worked in. Just pull both sides a little bit and get it worked in. This will all wear in on itself too. Now what I like to do is make sure that when everything is fully splayed all the way out, and this pouch is flat, that you still have some cord, and then you still want enough cord to kind of come around this. I'm actually gonna go and make these even with what we got right here. I'm gonna go ahead and make a little cut here. Burn the end. All right. Now help us work everything in and out as far as getting it cinched back up. We'll do the same thing. We'll try to go ahead and keep these uniform. Pull everything together. And it will break in. Everything will go ahead and break in just fine. But I like to go ahead and put a little piece of leather right into here before I put in my toggle. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you about the different options you have for toggles for this. You could do this however you want. You can make a circle, you can do what I'm doing, turn the corners off, or you can just leave it a rectangle. But you're gonna end up a little patch like this. And then you'll take the end of your cord, run it through that hole on both ends. Get one end in. and you'll end up with little pieces looking like that. All right, you have a lot of options when it comes to using different toggles. Most of the stuff that I've been making as of recently, I've been using these little antler tines. Made one that had a little button. I'm gonna end up using this piece of fat wood here. I'm gonna process it down, make a little rectangle. Almost the same way that we did this little leather piece here for the closure. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this. And I'm gonna come back and show you how we're gonna get it on. All right, so I went on ahead, just took this piece of fat wood, marked it, cut it down, marked the holes, drilled them out. Just all we do is slide our pieces onto there. Now we have a closure. And if we need to, we have a really good way to start a fire in rough conditions. You could go on ahead and put an overhand knot at each of these ends. Or what I like to do typically is I'll just go ahead and match them up, you know, the best I could. Just tie a little overhand knot and all of it. Doesn't have to be pretty, doesn't have to be perfect. So now you can go ahead and undo all that and you can get into your pouch. You can fill it with anything you want. These are gonna be tender pouches, kind of keeping the old traditional look with the leather. Real quick work, not the best one I made, but um, you know, it does the job. So 
hopefully you got something out of this. I think we made a pretty nifty little pouch here. This one's going to be used for fire, and that's what my next videos are going to cover. You always got to have a way to keep warm. If you want to see where we go from here, go on ahead and hit that subscribe button, and we'll continue on with our little series. I'll catch you out in the woods. Mm -hmm.